All right, let me stop my share. We are recording and I'm gonna share screen number one. Okay, so as I was saying, which I forgot to record, but now we're recording, we're gonna cover part two. G, create environmental hazards map and urban footprint showing different levels of sea level rise. Also create a parks and wetlands map. So we're gonna create two maps for this part. Remember when you finish your maps, just upload them into a, like whether it's PowerPoint or Word or whatever, save that, all the maps into one document and then um, save that PDF and then you'll upload that PDF into Canvas. Okay, so let's go back to Urban Footprint. Now this is gonna be a bit quicker, right? Because now we've, I've already introduced you into how layers work, right? So I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna delete these layers, I'm gonna turn them off. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you how quick this is. So I want to show um, how do you make, uh, let's start with a park and wetlands map, because I think that's easier to do than the sea level rise map. As I, I think the sea level rise map is not hard to do, but I just want to, we'll, go, we'll do that. We'll start with the parks. So type in parks, okay, uh, and then type in wetlands. Okay, we got wetlands, right? All right, so now we got, I thought I'd turn these off, but apparently not. So I'm gonna turn these transportation layers off and I'm gonna turn the wetlands map on and I'm gonna turn the park, park map on. Now I don't see anything. Why is that? Well, there's probably no parks or wetlands in my study area, right? So I zoom out and there we go. You can kind of begin to see where the parks and the wetlands are in relationship to study area. So you do see some wetlands here, right? So I'm gonna kind of just make a map that kind of shows where the parks and wetlands are in, in the context. I just click export, right? And uh, there we go. It shows me the different types of wetlands, the different, and then obviously local parks. And uh, I'll just go ahead and I got to download the old map. That's my old map right there from the transportation map. Don't forget to download that. Now I'll go ahead and export this map. You could create a title, you know, you could do parks and wetlands. Although what I would recommend in your final report is not to put a title on your map and put your title at the top above your map, like figure one or figure, you know, figure 1.1 or figure 2.1 or figure 3.1, depending upon your chapter. So I would I would actually not put your titles on your map, but put your put your titles in your report. If you want to use titles for assignment number one on the map, that's fine. Uh, whatever, however you want to do, it's fine with me. But um, go ahead and export this, and you're done, right? That's super quick and easy to make that parks and wetlands map, right? I could probably do that if I weren't talking. I could probably knock that out in like less than two minutes. Okay. So again, you got to wait for it to finish, but you can still go on to your next task while the map is being created in the cloud. Go ahead and turn off those layers. And I'm going to also, now I'm going to create a map showing different levels of sea level rise. I should be able to see sea level rise because I'm close to, you know, the ocean and the uh, intercoastal. And so now what I want to do is I want to type in sea level rise. Now, sea level rise here is reported in uh, different heights, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, let's look at one feet of sea level rise. Let's look at two feet of sea level rise, three feet of sea level rise. Um, then maybe I'll go to five feet of sea level rise, right? And, and I think that's probably enough for, for what I need. And so I'm gonna go ahead and close this dialog box and all those layers appear here 
on the outside, okay? And if I turn on one foot of sea level rise, um, what it does is it, it, actually, let me illustrate it with five feet of sea level rise. If I turn on five feet of sea level rise, it shows me different colors of the impact of sea level rise, right? And, and so like, if I zoom in here to the town of Palm Beach, right? What this is saying is that if there were five feet of sea level rise in this particular spot over here, there would be between zero and a half a meter of water. Why, why, why do you think that might be? Exactly, topography, right? But for my purpose, like I that that's all well and good, right? But I want to know like what is the impact of five feet of sea level rise versus three feet of sea level rise, right? So if I turn on both layers, um now all of a sudden I can't really see what the difference is between five foot of sea level rise and three feet of sea level rise, right? Because it's showing me like, it's useful if I'm just looking at one aspect of it, right? If there, if there was three feet of sea level rise, I know that in this location, there might be about one and a half to two meters of water because it's, it's maybe a low spot, right? But it doesn't, it's not really very helpful for me if I'm, if I'm trying to compare different levels. So the way to solve that problem is let's go ahead and take five feet of sea level rise and edit the symbology. And we're gonna make this all that same color, okay? Um, and so this right here um, will be uh, like the darkest impact. Let's see. Um, We'll go ahead and I, I don't know how to go ahead and select this particular color, which, you know, this, oh, let's see. No, actually, I can do that. Never mind. Let me do control Z. Okay. Apparently, I, this is cool. I can take this color and copy it right down in this little box and it'll change that color. Make sure that all the colors are the same. That's cool. I've never, I didn't know that I could do that. So you learn something new every time. So I'm going to go ahead and hit, put them all that color. So again, why am I doing this? Like, why am I making them all that color? Because I don't care if there's one inch or five feet. If it's wet, right? To me, it's unusable, right? And so if there's five feet of sea level rise, um. And this is the, the, the boundary. I'm going to just go ahead and make that all the same color, right? So now, if there's five feet of sea level rise, right, then I want to know exactly what that looks like. Okay. Now, I'm going to go to three feet of sea level rise. I'm going to pick a, a different color. I'm going to pick a lighter color. And so uh, maybe I'll pick, like, this color here edit the symbology, if I click on, let's say, that color, right? I'm going to go ahead and copy that color there. I'm, hit, I'm just hitting Control-C, and uh, I'm copying all these colors to be the same. So one of the things about Urban Footprint that I'm trying to show you is editing symbology is, is very important, and it's not hard to do when, once you kind of figure it out. Okay. Going to get all these colors the same, and you're when I finish what I'm doing, you're going to understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. And it's going to look nice, okay? And then I'm going to click on the stroke, and I'm going to change the stroke, which is the outline. I'm going to change that to the same, so it's all the same. Okay, I'm going to save that. So now um, let me go to two feet. And we'll go ahead and do the same kind of deal with two feet. We'll take uh, that color there, edit symbology. 
Copy that. I probably don't need to do these higher ones because if there's only two feet of sea level rise, right, we're probably not going to get uh, three meters. But nevertheless, I'm just doing it to show you, you know, that it's important, it's easy, and you know, you kind of go in here and, and change your symbology, go into your stroke, update the stroke color so it's all the same. Go ahead and save that, okay? And then. And then we'll finish off with one feet. And we'll pick the lightest color there. All right. And so now, once I finish this off, You can also pick the colors up here, but I kind of like they give sometimes they give you more options in, than what you see up there. All right, so I'll go ahead and save that. Okay, so now that I've done that, and by the way, my other map is now ready. So I'm just going to download that map. All right, that's the parks and wetlands map. So I have that downloaded. All right, so now I've finished. And again, I want to show you the importance of the layers in their, in their positioning. If I put five feet of sea level rise up here, right, I won't be able to see like one foot of sea level rise, right? Um, and I'm going to go ahead and actually put this, the opacity of these layers up to 100%. All right, so you want to have, uh, because of the opacity uh, and because of the layers, right, you want to have the lowest number at the top and the highest number at the bottom, right? So now I can see, like, if I turn off the five feet, if I turn off the three feet, turn off the two foot, right? Now I can see what, what happens with one foot of sea level rise, not much. We have two feet of sea level rise. Let's see, is, is there anywhere that's impacted by one feet of sea level rise? Let's see. A little bit, right in here for some reason. It really, it, it impacts uh, this. This is like, uh, I believe a golf course, honestly. Must be a low spot in the ground. And again, you know, this this information on sea level rise, this is like, I would I would use this with a big grain of salt. There's more accurate engineering models that predict sea level rise. So I wouldn't say this is the be all end all, but it's a good tool for planners to use. Now, if we have two feet of sea level rise, right? I can see now that uh, the one foot and the two foot. Now, if I have the three foot of sea level rise, I can see the one foot, the two foot and the three foot. And if I have five feet of sea level rise, I can see the one foot, the two foot, the three foot and the five feet. So now if I create um, a map out of this, oh, of course I wanna show my study area, right? That's not my study area. My study area is over here. And you can see that my study area is not impacted by sea level rise, or at least it's not impacted by five feet of sea level rise. There are certain areas that might be impacted um, why do you think these spots maybe show up here kind of in the middle of nowhere? Does anybody have an idea? There's canals and, and the water gets pushed up through these canals. So, um, so I'll, I'll create a map showing that, you know, really with five feet of sea level rise, I'm not really all that impacted. And then this legend is taking a little bit to load. Um, yeah, it shows you the different heights of water here in the legend. But um, of course, we made them all the same color. So again, it, that, that would make sense if we were just showing one layer of data. 
but um, we'll go ahead and export that. And that that is the map uh, for the sea level rise, showing different levels of sea level rise. And we already created the parks and wetlands map. So that, we'll go ahead and stop now because that is what you need to do for part 2G. Stop sharing and I'll stop recording.